All right, both sides got uh, four limbs in the pool this time. The English one, the initiative. They're gonna open fire with their artillery. Hard decisions as to, you know, what to play for because if you've got something like the French with Santini here, everything's weak. You might wanna rally it before you get hit. On the other hand, rallying is a free action. And it's not even going to be able to save the guys who've been hit, so... Um, largely, I kind of said, yeah, there's not much I can do there. Um, so we'll see uh, where the orders come up. They're kind of scattered throughout. The French are still in a position where I can't put that shit in. After ineffective artillery fire, this mixed force here marched forward with an assault. Um, as usual, not particularly uh, decisive results. The danger that when you get decisive results, maybe if you attack with a thin line, in that a thin line, if it breaks, it cracks open, and now you got a hole like occurred here, for example. If you attack with a thicker formation, chances are it's going to be disrupted all the way through if one of your units routes or whatever, that it's just going to take problems going through. But on the other hand, we also took out one of the uh, Dutch infantry there uh, with its regimental guns. So, you know, slow grind forward, but grind is definitely the correct word. Okay, Ranzu's cav. Well, ended up a lot smaller than I thought it was. There wasn't a connection right here, so these are going to be out of command. And then I ended up peeling off a bunch for Holstein Beck, thinking that I could keep uh, more maneuverable formations. The problem is I didn't put Holstein Beck into the cup, which means uh, maybe I should have moved some of these rear ones to at least get them moving. But they couldn't move very far. And it looks like Holstein Beck's going to actually move his cab, possibly doing an assault. Um, fairly effective still, routing some French, knocking some out. But these guys reached the end, hit a routed unit, and, well, they still have to make a morale check afterwards, I guess. It's kind of not clear what happens, uh, to me at least, with these uh, Anglo-Dutch cab. The first time they hit something, they become automatically disordered. After that, it's just not, I'm not sure what should happen. Do they take another auto disorder? Uh, do they take a morale check, no matter what, like normal units would? Uh, I'm just not sure. I think they're supposed to take an auto disorder, which actually means um, I should get rid of the casualties on these. And this thing here should actually uh, have some checks against it. It took hits, so we're going to have some casualties on that, I think. Maldi launches an assault, which uh, did not fare well at all. The artillery basically knocked back the front units. We can see one artillery got disordered here. That's going to be hard to recover. Basically, I have to take a movement action to fix that with the artillery. Movement actions are kind of hard to choose to take with artillery, especially when you've got some canister range fire available to you. Um, and then, but over here, we can see some English were routed as well. Uh, some definite hits along the French line too though, nothing looks like it's gonna be ready to fight another round anytime soon. Spar here manages a fairly impressive punch forward, but then Maffe uh, strikes with his cab and this was, there wasn't much to do except an assault, so I did it and it did not work out well at all. You can see basically uh, the cab is disordered to very little effect on the uh, infantry. One is disordered, but mainly the calves in much worse shape, uh, having to break their line to move a unit off here for the attack. That wasn't absolutely required, but close enough. Uh, it would have been very painful to go into there, which would have kept their formation together. 
Let me finish up the limbs over here with Giscard. Uh, charging forward. Hmm. I think we're going to actually, I haven't done, but I think we're going to have a uh, melee there. Uh, there was a counter charge, but I didn't notice this piece. I did the firing for him. So they are above one to one, but they're doing standing assault, so no bonus there. But there's a plus one to the morale because of the English unit. Five it holds, and now we have to check morale for these guys. The blue will be the guy at minus one. That's going to be a big route for that, including losses. Uh, whenever you roll a nine or higher on a regular morale check, it can be pretty extreme. I'm not sure exactly what I rolled with this guy. Uh, he was at one to one. I said plus one, but he actually has a plus three as well because he's being hit from there. So I'm saying that's going to be a disorder as well. Uh, and that's going to be a normal route. No losses, but the stack flees. And I have to advance thereby breaking up my units more. I found another chip in the cup before I uh, moved and with the uh, no limb stuff. Lumley, uh, best action I could think of was replacing the front line. A couple of these units, fresh units in the front now. That'll help uh, resist what looks like a heavy weight moving against me. This General B here <laughs> Kind of has to stretch his command out, I think, to prevent some kind of exploit to try to put some pressure on Spar's command. He's got a decent density himself and could stretch it out, but uh, yeah. <laughs> As we're seeing that play out, we are seeing that hole develop, and it's kind of scary, at least for the Spaniards here. We're alternating. Uh, let's see who Inglesby rallied. Moxian rallied. Orkney swapped troops up. You know, between the rallying and the swapping troops, and I may not like the swapping troops for this reason, although I understand its historical value, it kind of disturbs me for, for this reason. is It's another tool that prevents the conflict from getting on. And the, the first game I played, I felt gave me more of a... A real chance of a, a, a serious victory. This one, it just feels like there's so many things you can do to drag your feet in the game. Uh, you know, if Orkney, if his choices were to rally right away or to la launch an attack, he probably would have taken the rally. So we wouldn't see an attack right now. But now next turn, he wants to rally because he's got all these damaged units that he can bring back up to bear. And meanwhile, the French are probably doing the same, trying to protect themselves from losing the game again by losing these points. I guess, you know, it depends on your style of play. You could press things harder. You could put more pressure on the opponent. But I feel like the pressure of attacking under questionable odds uh, was not as good as recovering with Orkney and the same kind of situation kind of faces your opponent as well as well stiffen things so that I'm not risking as much you know maybe the opportunity will come somewhere else whatever and at least to this psychology uh, the nature of the design is making me more and more a cautious player I saw how risky uh, my oper my actions were in the first battle and I didn't have that line uh, replacement role in place. In this one, I feel like I'm barely pushing anywhere. <laughs> Add into that the, hey, we're already engaged, but nothing happens when our limb gets pulled because we couldn't roll an assault. That feels funny to me, too. It feels like those guys just aren't, you know, I, I don't know what it's supposed to mean. They're standing a little outside of firing range, certainly the hex size. Uh, is such that you do actually have um, room to be sitting there. But it doesn't much make sense if the artillery is not firing and it's sitting there with you or whatever. I, it just, it doesn't quite work for me in, in that case. Anyway, Holstein Beck failed to get his activity, so he didn't 
pursue these routers or anything like that. William, though, I made a choice to make a roll for. He was in kind of one of those bad positions that you want to recover from, but there wasn't any obvious recovery. So he slammed in and actually cost himself some units, but also destroyed some French. And we're going to see that that is going to have more effect. Now we go to the out of command stuff. And we can figure out what's actually out of command uh, to roll any uh, recoveries or to push forward with those calves. Uh, there's some places where it's pretty clear that there are out of command units. Other places, eh, I don't really remember, so I won't move them. As we wrap up the turn, these are our losses. I've scored them already. We're up to 112, 126. A little heavier for the French, taking some serious calf losses there. And some screwed up stuff with this unit. I'm not quite sure what was up with it. Marcin was sitting on top of it, which clearly couldn't be the case. Ah! Uh, I uh, tried to resolve it as best I can. Both sides taking a lot of chances on their route rolls. Basically, you roll high on that. Most units have a plus one, which means if you roll an eight or a nine, the unit's gonna take significant extra losses and route additional space. If you roll a seven, it means you're gonna take additional losses. So you're looking at, you know, 30%, you're taking a bad effect. On the other hand, you're looking at about 40%, you get a rally, one step level. If it's a routed unit, that's fine. You probably want to do it with routed units, but it's a lot harder to make that case when you're dealing with uh, just disordered units that you could rally that aren't going to be running away this turn. And sometimes it's a tough call, but uh, I feel like to stiffen my line and have a good effect, it might be the best answer given some of the other more cautious plays I'm taking, making the rolls on the, uh, on the route. Uh, on the recovery, uh, the rally check, seems like sort of the way to hedge the bet the other way. <laughs> so uh, the flow of the game, there, you have a lot of little little tools you can play with with your army to see how it's going to uh, end up reacting to a given situation. I'm not sure how realistic any of them are, you know, like... Hey, we're not going to actually make a rally check with that unit because that's too dangerous. What, what is that supposed to represent? But it does give you a lot of opportunities to kind of see a different storyline develop. You know, if you don't make the rally check, the unit remains somewhat disordered, but it's going to hold the line at least uh, as long as it's not put under any pressure. But... If you want to use the unit, well, you might take a bigger chance at causing it to break. And I mean, you can come up with storylines of why it would happen that way. There's no question. It's just I'm not sure how much realism is kind of built into this system in that way. Both sides actually had trouble finding things they wanted to do. And because of that, the Allies took the artillery. Yeah, haven't, even, haven't finished up with the art, uh, howitzers. I'm always forgetting them. Uh, only to fire down here. And... I thought it was just this one gun, because I've screened all my other guns, but really the other options all seemed kind of, you know, for example, Oyen here. He can't charge, but he can move up close enough that he can charge next turn without rolling, without spending a, a chit on. Same thing with Arantzu. So there's kind of a, well, there are a couple of places where I can gain something. And the French, who got one less pick, three to four, also had trouble finding places they really wanted to engage uh, in something prior to, say, the No Limbs. Anglo-Dutch get the rest of their uh, activations, actually, all of them, uh, in a row. Infantry, uh, Lumley, Spar, and Orkney all pushing forward. Lumley not doing so well, but over here in the center, we're really pushing close to uh, Ramillies. And getting some ground over here. It was actually Lumley who caused the casu the only casualties, I think. Uh, but in terms of ground gained, the others are definitely uh, pushing forward in a more impressive sort of way. The French have a couple of chits left. We'll see what they can do. Okay, the final chit was General A up here, who led an assault on the uh, Dutch units, and 
Lumley's command and more or less smacked it around pretty hard. Uh, not sure that's really... These may have been out of command units. I don't know which was in command and which was not. And why this piece is here. Um, I think Lumley was all in command. It looked pretty dense. That may be a an artifact from earlier. All right. Uh, that was a bit of a risky attack, actually. And you can see the French didn't necessarily fare terribly well from it, but they definitely broke up that flank. If they can reorganize and hit against Spar, they'll be able to maybe divert some of the damage that he's doing uh, there. Now, I think the English had the edge again here, so we move back to, uh, to their no limbs. Yeah, this was far more a close run thing than the other. Um, <laughs> French ended up one point over uh, after the rallying phase, basically. A couple of cav went off the board, another 20 points for that. The total was 60 points for the turn for six cav uh, being taken off. Mostly we were seeing rallying going on. Um, some of it successful, some of it obviously less so than otherwise. So, that's the end of our battle. Marlborough manages to win one just by kind of really doing damage to Cav rather than anything else. Got another game planned uh, for tonight, tomorrow. Uh, kind of something people are more interested in before we get over to the Fields of Glory stuff uh, from this same system. I want to finish up all the battles of this system before I give a review. I feel... The two games might as well be reviewed together. They are really the same system. In the same way that I don't give a review to every CWB game. Uh, this particular battle was kind of more interesting in some ways than the first one. Uh, the way it played out. I, it's maybe more because I'm beginning to get some feel for the system. I'm understanding how to play the system. I'm just not buying into what the system's telling me as being... Uh, particularly true to the era. Mm -hmm. All right, let's send this.